you ever watch a movie about a zombie outbreak and wonder how you might react in a similar crisis? You picture yourself spouting one-liners and spraying buckshot into the pursuing horde as you and your hodgepodge band of survivors try to escape to safety? Let's face it, we've all thought about it, and now Left 4 Dead has arrived to give you the chance to live it from the safety of your own home. And live it you will, because Left 4 Dead does an excellent job of drawing you into the survival experience. You play as one of four survivors, regardless of whether you're playing by yourself, split screen with a friend, or online with up to four players. The characters you play as are detailed and likable, and have a great deal of things to say. Their banter is not only instructive, it's also immersive. You'll definitely appreciate it when playing by yourself. Though you may not appreciate the AI's reluctance to use pipe bombs or refusal to join you on a safer, elevated position. Left 4 Dead is definitely best when played with a group of other human players, because on-the-fly strategy is so key to your survival. Though your teammates' voices may drown out the in-game characters, hearing that note of desperation creep into your buddy's voice as he cries out for help is more immersive than any pre-recorded voice could ever be. Teamwork is essential, so if you run across an uncooperative player online, they can really sour things up. Fortunately, Left 4 Dead features a voting system that allows you to call a vote to change the difficulty or boot a player. This is especially important because friendly fire is always on. So someone could... What? Oh, yeah, I said always on. So watch where you're pointing that shotgun, or automatic rifle, or pistol for that matter. All the weapons are effective and fun to use. Though the guns you get when you're further along in each campaign are decidedly more fun and deadly. Each of the four campaigns takes our four intrepid survivors through a variety of urban, suburban, and rural environments. These environments are grim and bleak and cluttered with the detailed remains of a society overrun. They are also cluttered with zombies, or infected, or normatively challenged humanoids. Whatever you call them, they are everywhere. As you enter a given area, you may see a bunch of them standing around, groaning, vomiting, fighting amongst themselves, you know, zombie stuff. Enter through this same area during a different playthrough and the scene could be deserted. The zombies could be waiting and then just rush out and attack you, or they could wait until you turn around the next corner. They're really unpredictable and misbehavior means you'll have to be ever vigilant. And this makes the whole experience way more tense and it makes each victory more rewarding. Normal infective are pretty nasty. They're those speedy kind of nasty zombies that run at you pell-mell, barreling towards you as fast as they can without falling down. When they do fall down in an explosion of gunfire, they flop to the side or go rocketing backwards, limbs flying off in a perversely satisfying way. In numbers, they are quite deadly, but definitely manageable. When the special infected get into the mix, things get sticky. These guys have special powers that can throw a huge wrench into your strategical gears, turning a bad situation into a holy crap I'm gonna die situation. Without going into too much detail, vomiting, clawing, and frog-like tongue grabbing are just some of the nasty abilities you'll have to contend with. If these abilities sound oddly intriguing, then wait till you hear about the versus mode. In this online mode, up to eight players can compete in two teams of four. One team plays as the survivors, and the other team spawns as the special infected. If you thought getting through a level alive was a tough proposition, wait until you've got a team of human players coordinating their fiendish zombie assaults. The infected can respawn, while survivors cannot. So the longer survivors take to get through, the more shots the infected get. This adds a whole new level of tension and makes for some heated, intense games. Once the survivors die or complete the level, the team switch sides. Versus mode is great because it requires a whole different kind of strategy. Rather than fighting off a huge nebulous force as you progress towards an objective, you have to set up ambushes and execute targeted strikes on a small group. Thinking like a survivor and thinking like an infected are two distinctly challenging yet equally engaging ways to play Left 4 Dead. Teamwork is vital for both, and fractured, uncooperative teams can be really frustrating to play on, as is the case with most co-op games. Fortunately, Left 4 Dead stands head and shoulders above most co-op games. 
The frantic, ever-changing pace of the action means you're always facing different challenges and always winning new victories or dying new horrible deaths. Only four campaigns to play through, this dynamic element is essential and keeps the game feeling fresh each time you go through it. So if you've got a few friends with even a passing interest in first-person shooters or the zombie apocalypse, Left 4 Dead will provide you all with plenty white-knuckle, zombie-blasting, survivor-mauling good times. Yeah.